بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful لا اله الا الله لا اله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله واعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون Brothers and sisters in Islam It is incumbent upon us to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times for indeed, he who is conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall be saved. Those who are oblivious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even for a single moment, have lost and perhaps they will have much to lose not only in this world, but even in the life after death. Your savior and mine is by constantly remembering that we are answerable to the Almighty. Everything we do, we should prepare an answer for him. If we have erred, we prepare an answer through tawbah and repentance. And if we have done good, we should ensure that it is done sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following the blessed style and teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'd like to share with you a beautiful narration that appears in Sahih al-Bukhari, narrated by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, wherein he speaks of the sweetness of this iman and belief that we have. The Prophet ﷺ has spoken of the sweetness of iman. This means that the iman and the belief I have and you have has a taste to it. It has a taste far more delicious and sumptuous than any meal that you could have, than anything that one could taste. The taste of Iman. The question I have before we commence, how many of us have tasted the sweetness of belief? We say we are believers, we say we are submitters, which means we say we are mu'mineen and we say we are muslimin. But sometimes neither have we submitted, nor is our belief up to the level it is supposed to be. Although life continues to be a struggle in the right direction, each one of us trying his or her best to achieve the pleasure of the Almighty, we need to remember never to lose focus upon this. So what is it that will make us achieve the sweetness and taste it? There are three qualities. If they are found in a person, that person will be able to taste the sweetness of Iman. And these qualities, some of these scholars have made mention of how each person will enjoy the sweetness of Iman according to the level of fulfillment of these qualities. The first quality that is made mention of by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this beautiful narration, أَنْ يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سِوَاهُمَا The person whom, for him, Allah and his messenger is more loved than anyone and everyone else than anything and everything else so if i were to love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger more than my wealth i will make sure that whatever i do to earn or spend is not in the displeasure of allah but within his pleasure and on top of that i make sure that i spend and when i spend it is because my love for allah 
has exceeded my love for wealth. The same applies to my dress code. I cannot allow myself to love my limbs more than I love Allah. I cannot allow myself to love my hair more than I love Allah. I cannot allow myself to love my looks when I look in the mirror more than I love Allah. If I love Allah more than my looks, I will make sure I look something similar to that which will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I love Allah more than my hair, I will make sure, and this is more addressed to the sisters, that the hair is covered. Because that is what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will not be able to taste the sweetness of Iman if we allow our love for the jewelry we have, for the perfumes we have, perhaps for the clothing we have, the hair, the limbs, the organs, the materialistic items. If I allow my love for that to exceed the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I may never ever taste the sweetness of this belief and Iman with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Yes, we are living in this world and the Almighty has created it such that He has allowed us to make use of whatever this world has to offer. He has allowed us to enjoy within limits what this dunya and this world has to offer. But that does not mean we are allowed to let the love that we have for the world exceed the love for the Almighty whom we are going to return to. You have your family members, you have your motor vehicles, you have your relatives, you have your spouses, you have so many other people as well as materialistic items. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us that should not distract you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah O you who believe, do not let your wealth or your family members divert you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He comes first, then everything else. If we love Allah most, we will make sure when we are earning, the earning is halal. When we are earning, we have not cheated anyone. We have not deceived anyone. We have worked hard. We have not stolen from our workplace, whether it is time or something material. We make sure we are honest. We make sure we are upright. We make sure we treat people fairly because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those are his teachings. As for the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is very important for us to know that by following him, we display the love for him. If we do not follow him, it means we have had the guts to go against the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When someone invites us to an innovation, the answer should be very plain and simple. We should say, I don't have the guts to go against the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I don't have the guts to engage in an act of worship that he did not teach because he was sent to teach us how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the love. For Allah. This is the love for the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is why in the Quran Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala explains this so beautifully by instructing Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to give us a powerful message. What is the message? قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Wallahu ghafoorur raheem Say, if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me and Allah will love you. Follow who? Follow the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah will love you and he will forgive your sins for indeed he is most forgiving, most merciful. What an amazing ingredient. What an amazing composition. If we would like to show our love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent someone to us instructing us and telling us so if we were to follow the messenger we have shown love for allah as well as his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam may peace be upon him his family members and all the previous messengers and all their companions i mean so brothers and sisters quality number one to love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger more than the love for anything and everything else more than the love for anyone and everyone else this is an important issue I need to think about on a daily basis. And why we say this, we have declared we are Muslim. But let's take it to a higher level. I'm sure we can. 
There is no point in saying I'm a Muslim, but it's time for salah, I am lazy to fulfill. How are we going to taste the sweetness of this iman? Time for dressing appropriately, I cannot and I don't want. Try, time for being honest, I don't want. Time for leavings, the sins that displease Allah, I don't want. If that is the case, brothers and sisters, we have a lot to improve on and we need to really work hard on ourselves so that we can taste the sweetness of iman. What is the second quality mentioned in this beautiful hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu an? Wherein the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes mention of the second quality. He says, An yuhibba rajula la yuhibbuhu illa lillah. The one who loves his fellow brethren or his brother, meaning a person who is in faith with you, your fellow Muslim, to love him or her solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've heard this a lot. I'm sure people say, brother, I love you for the pleasure of Allah. What is the meaning of it? How do I know that I love someone solely and only for the pleasure of Allah? There is something important to define this. When you see a person who is anonymous to you, you don't even know them. You don't even have a clue who they, they are or what their name is. Subhanallah. And the mere fact that they are trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws your heart closer towards them and does not take it further away from them. That is one of the signs that you love someone for the sake of Allah. So when you see a sister donning the hijab, for example, and when you see her walking in a way that is very modest and you realize that she is doing this for the pleasure of Allah in an environment that might not be easy for her to do that. Because today, in most countries of the world, it is easier to remove the hijab than to wear it. It is easier to miss your salah than to fulfill it. Because the environment around us sometimes not only does not encourage us to be good Muslims, but it discourages us from being good Muslims and it encourages us from abandoning our teachings. So when you see a person who is trying to accept or who is trying to follow the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if within your heart you can say a small dua, Ya Allah, help the sister. You don't need to know who she is. You don't need to know her name or her phone number. You need to know nothing about her. All you need to know, that is my sister in faith. I may never know who she is, but Ya Allah, open her doors. Ya Allah, make it easy for her. Ya Allah, grant her. Subhanallah. Take a look at some of the European countries where hijab was banned. Here comes a businessman and he says, every fine that any one of you who is going to be fined because of wearing the hijab, I will pay it. Subhanallah. What love is this? I may never know who these sisters are, but here is the wealth, 150 euros. If you are going to be fined, don't worry, I will pay. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us such acceptance. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. When you don't know who it is, you don't know who they are, you will never know who they are. But you are ready solely because they are trying to please Allah. Maybe we might be weaker than them, but something in our heart says that is my sister. And we have a feeling for them. This will contribute towards you tasting the sweetness of Iman. This is what will contribute towards you believing that I am part of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, today our hearts are full of hatred and this is why the Iman is weak within us. We hate people for the smallest difference that we have with them. Not realizing my brothers and sisters, every one of us, myself included, we have so much to improve and we have so much to learn and we have so much in order to draw closeness to Allah to do. So why don't we learn to love one another? Brother, I see you and I find out your name is Abdullah or Muhammad or someone of that nature and immediately something, a feeling comes into my heart. This is my brother in faith. If that is the case, you have an acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is it that we look at people and we start categorizing them materially? This man does not have wealth. This man does not drive that vehicle. This man is not living in that suburb where all the villas are. This man's salary is lower. This man works. He's a lower worker than I am. So I cannot love him. And I cannot, for example, do anything for him. I cannot have this feeling for him. That is what is destroying the ummah. That is why we do not taste the sweetness of Iman. Even if he is working for you, 
you love him for the sake of Allah, meaning you will ensure that your actions do not make him disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In some countries, some Muslims do not allow other Muslims a time off to read their Friday prayers as well. What type of love is this? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and may he grant us guidance and acceptance. And when we say the word love here, it is not something illicit or dirty. No, it is the pure feeling that emanates and comes from the heart of genuineness to say, I would really like for them what I like for myself. When your son comes to you, your wife comes to you, and she wants something or he wants something, and you love them so dearly, you may give them something that you wanted as well. But solely because you love them so much, you say, don't worry, you are my son, take it, I will get something else, and I don't really need it, and so on. This is a sign of love. The hadith teaches us that this should be the case with every single person who is a believer, not just your family members alone, subhanallah. Not just your family members alone, but everyone. Sometimes it is difficult for us to give away the things that we need and we love, for example, but we need to realize the minimum is the feeling in your heart to say, that is my brother in faith. That is my sister in faith. Do you feel a connection with those seated next to you now in this house of Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the answer is no, you have a lot to improve on. And if the answer is yes, whether they are expatriate from another country altogether, or whether they are citizens of this beautiful country, should not be a differentiating point. That is Iman, that is Islam, and that is what will make us taste the true sweetness of this faith of ours. May Allah bless us. We see people suffering across the globe. The bare minimum is that we feel in our hearts, Ya Allah, alleviate their suffering. The minimum is for us to make a dua, to say a prayer and to ask Allah to open their doors, to grant them peace and stability, comfort and protection from the oppressors. That is the bare minimum. If we don't have that feeling as a minimum, we cannot really call ourselves part of one huge family known as the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amazing. And this is why constantly check yourself and ask yourself, what is my feeling towards my fellow brothers and sisters? If I have hatred in my heart, I am heading in the wrong direction. Yes, everyone needs improvement. Sometimes we might disagree with a few things that some of our brothers and sisters are doing. But when you have a feeling for them, you will think of positive solutions, how to help them, how to correct them, how to rectify them, and how perhaps you will give them an opportunity to rectify you. Subhanallah. This is amazing. But if we just hate one another because of two differences we have, then believe me, every one of us seated here has perhaps more than two differences with the other. What is the point of calling ourselves an ummah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. I've just mentioned the two qualities. Let's move on to the third. And to recap the first one, to love Allah and his messenger more than anyone and everyone else, more than anything and everything else. The second quality, to love a brother solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing draws you to him or her besides the fact that they are believers trying to earn the pleasure of Allah. Therefore, we love them. Sometimes we love a person because we know this person is head of HR. So we are perhaps going to get a job through them. So, Salaamu Alaikum, how are you, my brother? That smile is not for Islam. It's because they're of the position. Sometimes we have a person who is very wealthy and we greet them. Salam is because of the real and the dollar, not because of the Islam. Sometimes a person is very good looking and so we greet them. Salam, a very popular person. Salam. But what about the millions that you come across on a daily basis? Then no salam? How can that be? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people who can utter the word salam. It is free. It does not need a battery in your throat in order to say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And it will earn you the pleasure of Allah. The smile on your face is free. It is cheaper than frowning, believe me, in terms of muscular use. And at the same time, you are earning the opportunity to taste the sweetness of Iman and Islam. Most of us, perhaps maybe not most, but a lot of us, we don't even know our neighbors where we live. Because we are now living in an age where we have forgotten to love one another for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
May Allah open our doors. The third quality, an yakraha, an yauda ila al kufr, kama yakrahu an yulqa fin nar. The person who hates to return to disbelief in the same way they would hate to be cast into the fire. What does this mean? It has a very deep meaning. Every one of us is on a spiritual journey. Every day should be better than the previous day. We should hate to go back to the ignorance of the previous day in the same way we hate to be thrown into the fire. So if someone was a total disbeliever and they entered the fold of Islam, they should dislike to go back in the same way they would dislike to be cast into hellfire. And if someone were a Muslim or they have accepted Islam and they are progressing, so from a position of not being able or not reading five salah a day, coming to a position of reading five salah a day, that is a great achievement. When we look at that achievement, we should look back and tell ourselves, I'm never ever going to miss a single prayer again. And I hate going back on my achievement in the same way that I hate being cast into hellfire. That is when we will be able to taste the sweetness of Iman. For example, a sister who might not have been donning the hijab and after some time she became a little bit higher spiritually. She should, she should dislike to go back on that achievement. This is why we say brothers and sisters, when you have achieved something good in terms of your link with Allah and his Rasul and in terms of your spirituality, you should never ever go back on that. This is why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, خَيْرُ الْعَمَلِ مَا دِيمَ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنْ قَلَّتْ The best of deeds are those which are done regularly, even if they are less. Because what is the point of someone, one day he is a saint. He reads all his five salah with the sunnah and the nafila and the extra salah and the next day there is no salah at all. What's the point of that? Rather you read with consistency. What's the point of a man who reads the Quran? And he reads the Quran only in the month of Ramadan. Once Ramadan ends, he closes it in onto the shelf until the next Ramadan. Yesterday, I received a message from someone and I thought it was interesting. They say nowadays you can tell when a person is online, when it comes to the social media. So if you look at the WhatsApp, you see online two minutes ago. When you look at the BBM online five minutes ago, when you look at, for example, the Viber online one minute ago, when you look at Skype, they are online right now. When you look at the Quran, they were online last Ramadan. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. It's a reality. We have more time for our social media than we have for Allah. Yet when you die, your phone is offline, your Viber is offline, your WhatsApp is offline, your BBM is offline, your Quran will be online at that time. Why? Because your a'mal, your deeds will come with you to your grave, not your phone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and open our doors and our understanding. Brothers and sisters, I have spoken quite a bit. I hope that I benefit from what I've said and yourselves as well. It is about time we checked our hearts and we looked at how we treat one another, whether or not we are really preparing for the day we will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Death has overtaken so many people. It has overtaken the young and the old. It knows no age and it does not come with notice. It is not a rental position which tells you you have one month's notice. No, it comes just like that. <laughs> when the prescribed time of Allah comes, it will not be delayed. So we need to know, prepare for that by at least trying to taste the sweetness of Iman. Believe me, if you have tasted a little bit of the sweetness of Iman in this world, by the will of Allah, you are heading in the right direction and you will be able to achieve a lot when it comes to the Akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Beloved brothers and sisters, it is important that we remain conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We remain fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that will help us prepare for the day we die, the day that we are going to leave this world, the day that we are going to join the other millions and billions who have already died, the day we are going to be meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is important we realize and understand that that is the main aim of a believer to prepare for the day he or she will be meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون Oh you who believe be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala each one of you look into what you have prepared for tomorrow what have you prepared for presentation tomorrow what are your deeds that are going to be sealed for you and handed over as your own deeds tomorrow and fear Allah he knows what you do this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so don't lose focus upon that no matter how enticing the world is around you never lose focus upon the fact that Allah can take you at any moment at any time may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all there will come a day when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that every single one of you shall be speaking to Allah without an intermediary in between no need for translations no need for explanations Allah will speak to you and I and we will be answering him directly for our deeds we need to prepare for that day we do not want to be embarrassed on that day how to prepare there are several ways we speak about them regularly it is important for us not to be lazy when it comes to increasing the knowledge we have of Allah and his Rasul of the deen of this particular religion and the same time of what is it that will benefit us when we leave this beautiful world for something even more beautiful and that is the life after death brothers and sisters an intelligent person is he who realizes who he is and prepares for that which is to come prepares for after death and a fool is he who follows his whims and fancies and then has hope in the mercy of Allah yet he did not do anything that would have beckoned or called for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how can I call for the mercy of Allah I can call for it by engaging in repentance by turning back and this is something so beautiful because it gives us hope as Muslimin where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says tell my worshippers O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whomsoever from amongst them has transgressed against themselves never to lose hope from my mercy for indeed Allah forgives all sins he is most forgiving most merciful and tell them to turn to me before it is too late and the day comes to them after which they shall regret these are verses of the Quran subhanallah قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allahu Akbar What beautiful verses May the Almighty grant us goodness We have hope we have reason to smile because we are still breathing and we still have a lot of opportunity but we don't know when that opportunity will be snatched this opportunity is an opportunity to turn to Allah and ask him to forgive us we promise Allah we change our ways and habits we ask Allah for forgiveness we ask Allah to open our doors and grant us goodness many others have had the goodness they were in taken away that is also a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala May the Almighty grant us goodness. Sallu wa sallimu yarhamukum Allah. Ala al-Nabi al-Mustafa wa al-Habib al-Mujtaba. Kama amarakum bithalika rabbukum jalla wa ala. Faqala azza wa jalla. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Yaqulu alayhi salatu wa salam. Man salla alayya wahidah. Salla Allahu alayhi biha ashra. Allahumma fasalli wa sallim wa barik wa an'im ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammadin afdali al-khalq. Wa akram al-rusul. Wardu Allahum an khulafaihi al-rashidin. Al-a'immati al-mahdiyin Abi Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali. اللهم ارض عنهم وعن سائر الصحابة والتابعين وعنا معهم بمنك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا وأصلح أئمتنا وأولاة أمورنا واجعل ولايتنا في من خافك واتقاك واتبع رضاك يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم ادفع عنا الغلاء والوباء والربا والزنا والزلازل والمحن وسوء الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن اللهم انصر الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم بغير حق إلا أن يقولوا ربنا الله 
اللهم انصرهم أينما كانوا يا قوي يا عزيز يا جبار السماوات والأراضين يا صاحب كل نجوى ويا منتهى كل شكوى اللهم انصر المجاهدين في سبيلك في كل مكان اللهم انصرهم أينما كانوا يا قوي يا عزيز يا جبار السماوات والأراضين يا صاحب كل نجوى ويا منتهى كل شكوى اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين وارحمنا إذا صرنا إلى ما صاروا إليه ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك